One of the nice qualities of state trees is the flexibility they offer. This flexibility is provided in part by transitions. Transitions allow any state in the tree to point to any other state, but every transition has a trigger condition that needs to be met before the transition can be activated. So as of UE 5.4, there are five different transitions and four of them are pretty intuitive, but one of them on event transition isn't as straightforward and there's just not a ton of uh, documentation on it yet. So in this video, I just want to isolate and demonstrate how to trigger an event transition. So this isn't a full blown tutorial, but the project files are available for you to download in the description. It's always better to learn by doing so feel free to open those files and play with what I've done. In this project, I have an enemy character that's patrolling a path, and I want that enemy to enter into a chase sequence when it sees a player. I'm going to use an event transition to accomplish this. So the way I think of event transitions is they're the only trigger conditions that aren't triggered within the state tree itself. They're triggered externally in a separate blueprint. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments. I think it's beneficial to know that you're triggering a transition in a blueprint that's not the state tree blueprint. I'm just gonna dive into the project that we have. So in this project, the first thing I need to do is create the transition conditions. So I'm gonna pop into the content drawer. I'm gonna open up a state tree. And as you can see, we have an idle state, a move to location state, and this chase sequence. So whether we're idling or moving to a location, we should be able to enter the chase sequence. So I'm gonna start with idle. Under transitions, I'm gonna hit this add element button and we're gonna expand that and we're gonna change this to on event. Now you'll notice that on event requires a tag. If there's multiple events that could be triggered, we need a way to identify which transition to trigger specifically and tags are just a good way of doing that. So I'm gonna hit this plus sign, and add a new tag. I'm gonna call this patrol dot saw player we got to define the source i'm just going to leave the source as the default gameplay tags i'm going to add new tag and as you can see our new tag gets added so like i don't fully understand the naming convention of tags but using the dots um, gives subcategories so i could have essentially create a separate tag uh, patrol dot something else and it would give another subcategory. So we're just gonna mark patrol.saw player and we wanna transition into chase. You can also set a priority here. Like I said, if you have multiple transitions and you want this one to take higher priority, I think, I think it's a way of resolving something like a race condition. But in this example, it doesn't matter. We can just leave it at normal. And to be honest, I'm not sure why you'd want to delay a transition. So <laughs> I'm not going to touch that in this tutorial. And we got to do the same thing for move to location. We're going to repeat what we just did. And in the event tag, we don't have to create a new one because the one that we already created is there. We'll transition to chase. And so now we actually have to trigger this transition. So in my example, this is going to be triggered from the blueprint that is from the player blueprint that's running the state tree. I already have AI perception set up in this blueprint. Um, like I said, you can download the project files and look and see exactly what I did. Essentially, all that's happening here is when perception gets updated, we check and see if the patrolling character can currently see the player character and if that's true we set a reference to the player character so we can always get its location for the chase sequence and off of this true condition uh, we need to drag in state tree and we need to call state tree send state tree event and for this event i'm going to promote this to variable and we'll call this chase event, this state tree event. We'll compile and this state tree event has some default values that we can set. One of those is the tag. And so by setting this tag to the same tag that we set in the state tree itself, 
um, we essentially know which transition to trigger. So I set it to patrol.saw player. Um, you can also deliver a payload with these events. Uh, I don't have any use for that yet, so I haven't dove into this yet, but it's good to know. And you can also define the origin. Um, I think that's probably great for debugging. Just so you know what's calling the event. But yeah, this is literally all you have to do. So now when our enemy character sees the player character, it will send this uh, state tree event and cause a chase sequence to happen. You don't want to forget to come and compile and save your state tree because that can cause issues. But when we hit play, I'm going to enable debugging just apostrophe and I believe four on the D pad so we can see um, this chase sequence begins with the character rotating to face me for a couple of seconds. As you can see, it sees me and now it's chasing me and we should be able to lose sight around this corner. And it'll move to where it last saw me. Wait. And then resume its path. I know why it's not waiting. Um, hold on. So the reason why it's not waiting is because in the state tree itself. We transition into idle. Um, when we should be transitioning into complete chase idle. Now let's try that one more time. One more again. Uh, debugging is just apostrophe and four on the D pad. Dumb pad. Right. Break the line of sight. And then it goes back to patrolling. Then it sees me. Comes and chases. Realizes it can't get to me. It goes back to patrolling. Yeah, this is working as expected. That's it. That's all there is to it. As you can see, they're pretty simple to use, but there's just not much documentation on how to make them work. So I hope you found this helpful. Shinobi out.